there was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Elon Musk is funding actor Gina Carano's lawsuit against Disney. Now, if there's one guy you don't want funding a lawsuit against you, it's the richest man in the world. <laughs> Ever seen a fantasy become a nightmare? Due to the overwhelming negative feedback, Disney's latest Snow White remake may be one of the studio's biggest failures. What's really happening in the background? We'll analyze the controversy and criticism surrounding the most recent Disney remake in this video, which has received an astonishing 850,000 dislikes just from the trailer. There's no denying the public's dissatisfaction. We'll get into the significant legal disputes Disney is now embroiled in from claims of beyond simply poor reception. Discrimination to sidelining certain viewpoints, plus we'll explore Elon Musk's surprising involvement in funding lawsuits against the entertainment giant. What does this mean for the future of Disney films? If you're intrigued by deep the rabbit hole goes in Hollywood controversies, don't forget to. Subscribe to like, comment, and share. Let's delve into Disney's recent handling of the Snow White remake, which is more than just a matter of a film not quite hitting the mark. The situation reveals a much deeper, more complex scenario involving serious legal entanglements, which could have significant repercussions for the entertainment giant. The crux of the controversy centers on allegations that Disney has been engaged in discriminatory practices, allegedly favoring certain groups over others. Critics claim that the company has shown bias, particularly against men and specific political viewpoints. These accusations suggest a troubling pattern where Disney's internal decision-making processes might be influenced by more than just creative and market considerations. Adding another layer to the drama is the involvement of tech mogul Elon Musk adds another layer of drama. Known primarily for his ventures in space exploration and electric vehicles, Musk has surprisingly turned his attention to Disney. He is reportedly funding a series of lawsuits aimed at challenging Disney's practices, alleging that the company is not conducting its business in a fair and unbiased manner. Musk's unexpected involvement raises intriguing questions about the motivations behind these legal battles and what could be at stake for Disney. The combination of these allegations and Musk's high-profile involvement creates a volatile mix. The lawsuits could potentially shake the very foundations of Disney's operational and cultural practices. As the legal battles unfold, they will likely reveal much about Disney's internal dynamics and how it handles issues of fairness and equity. For now, the situation remains fluid, and its ultimate impact on Disney and the broader industry is yet to be fully understood. Certainly, there have been times where, you so know, know there's no way we're hiring a white male person. It's kind of it's, yeah. unspoken. Uh, there are times when it's spoken. But How would they say it? There's no way we're hiring a white male person. <laughs> Say like straight that. to you yeah. or okay yeah. they'd be very careful how they message that to agents i think i'm sort of like well prepared for it i'm well uh, positioned for it but as far as disney's concerned i'm a white male that's not what the, who they're looking to promote them. i have friends in hr and i have friends in those yeah. divisions and they're like look nobody else is going to tell you this mike but they're not considering any white males for the shop they're just not that's really one problem a few years ago now um, who was half black but didn't like appear half black and um, there was a creative executive who was like we're not like that's not that's not what's going like they wanted somebody in meetings who would appear a certain way and he wasn't gonna, gonna bring that to the meeting I mean it kind of feels like we're you know, at some point there's going to be a lawsuit that's kind of how it feels just because of like, yeah saying that there is a acceptable code words and buzzwords that are used to explain what they what they're looking for. They might say something like, you know, look, we're not we're we're not looking at like the usual suspects for this job. Okay, no. So it's like not like a legally actionable thing. But everybody knows what it means. They, you know, the writers and actors will hear all the time, like uh, you know, looking to hire writers and actors who bring diversity. I'm not looking to bring on any more clients who are white. 
Navigating the intricacies of job opportunities within large corporations can be challenging, especially when facing subtle biases that may not always be overtly stated. For instance, there's a growing sense that, as a white male, I might not be the ideal candidate Disney is seeking to promote. This perception isn't unfounded. I've received confidential insights from friends in human resources and other relevant divisions who've shared candid information with me. They've mentioned Mike, no one else will tell you this, but Disney is simply not considering white males for these roles right now reflecting on past experiences. There's a notable precedent. A few years ago, a colleague of mine who was half black but didn't outwardly fit traditional racial markers faced similar biases. Despite his qualifications, a creative executive made it clear that the company was not interested in his profile. They wanted someone who would fit a particular image or bring a certain dynamic to meetings a dynamic he did not align with. This experience highlights a broader pattern of selective bias in hiring practices, often disguised behind ambiguous but telling language. At Disney, it feels like a similar situation might be unfolding. The language used in job postings and internal communications often includes buzzwords and coded terms that signal what the company is looking for. Phrases like we're not considering the usual suspects or a preference for diversity can sometimes indicate a preference that excludes certain profiles, even though these terms are not legally actionable. For writers and actors, the scenario is familiar diversity is a key factor in hiring decisions, often leaving out traditional or less diverse candidates. The underlying message may not always be explicitly stated, but it's widely understood within the industry. As these dynamics continue to evolve, they raise questions about fairness and inclusivity in today's corporate landscape. Weird. Weird. Super weird. So we didn't do that this time. <laughs> we have a different approach to what I'm sure a lot of people will assume is a love story just because like we cast a guy in the movie, right. Andrew Burnap, great dude. Yeah. Uh, it's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. And whether or not she finds love along the way is anybody's guess until 2024. Um, all of Andrew's scenes could get cut, who knows? The ongoing debate over hiring practices at major corporations has taken a new twist, particularly when it comes to Disney. Recent revelations suggest a troubling trend Disney appears to be hesitant about bringing white candidates on board. This isn't just speculative chatter, but rather a significant issue highlighted by a leaked recording that's now a central piece of evidence in ongoing discrimination lawsuits against the company. If the claims made in this recording hold true, it raises serious concerns about the fairness of Disney's internal practices and decision-making processes. The situation is further complicated by the current turmoil surrounding Disney's Snow White remake. With lawsuits threatening and public opinion turning sour, Disney has been compelled to make extensive changes to the film. This isn't merely about minor adjustments the company is undertaking major reshoots to eliminate any elements that might be viewed unfavorably in a legal context. The urgency of these modifications reflects Disney's heightened sensitivity to potential legal and public relations issues. Historically, Disney has been synonymous with enchantment and feel-good stories. Yet now the company is caught in a race against time, working feverishly to revise scenes and preempt any further backlash. The shift from crafting magical narratives to managing crisis control underscores the severity of the situation. Disney's efforts to remove any problematic content from Snow White indicate a desperate attempt to mitigate damage and avoid a potentially damaging courtroom confrontation. As this situation continues to unfold, it serves as a stark reminder of the complex interplay between corporate practices, legal challenges, and public perception. The broader implications for Disney's reputation and future projects remain to be seen, but the current upheaval clearly signals a period of significant adjustment and scrutiny for the entertainment giant. Twist in the tale, this one's about a specific scene that's got everyone talking in the new Snow White movie. There's a moment where Snow White is seen ordering the male dwarfs around, telling them to clean up. Now you might think, hey, it's just a bit of direction, right? But nope, it's stirred up a reel. Hornet's nest people are calling it out as sexism saying. The portrayal of male characters in Disney's recent productions has ignited a substantial debate, primarily because these characters seem to be depicted in a negative light. Critics argue that this trend signals an anti-male bias raising questions about the messages being conveyed to young audiences. When a company like Disney, known for its family-friendly content, starts presenting male characters in such a manner, it prompts a broader discussion about the implications for children's understanding of gender roles and equality. The reaction to these portrayals has far exceeded mere social media grumblings. It has become a widespread issue that resonates deeply with many. Public sentiment suggests that this might be part of a larger pattern within Disney, where some believe the company is systematically sidelining certain groups. 
This isn't just a minor controversy that can be smoothed over with a simple press release. It's a significant issue that threatens to impact Disney's public image and could influence how the company is perceived by both the public and the courts. If Disney defends itself in legal proceedings by promoting its commitment to equality and fairness, but its films suggest otherwise, it creates a dissonance that could damage its credibility. The contradiction between the company's public stance and the content it produces could undermine its efforts to project an inclusive and equitable image. The controversy represents more than just a passing issue. It could shape the perception of Disney's corporate culture for the foreseeable future, potentially affecting both its reputation and its legal standing. I told you, you're not welcome here. Just give me one more drink and then I'll leave. Hi, Peanut. I'm gonna need you to come with me right now. Oh, whiskey dick of the claws. It's quite common in Wolverines over 40. You don't want this. Unless you want to take a deep breath through your fucking forehead, I suggest you reconsider. This Wolverine let down his entire world. Uh, go fuck yourself. I don't know anything about saving worlds, but you do. You were an X-Man. You were the X-Man. Let's delve into Disney's courtroom strategy, which reveals that the company is bracing for a formidable legal battle. Key elements in this situation include certain scenes from the Snow White remake and some offhand comments made by the film's star, Rachel Zegler. And while Zegler's remarks about her male co-star scenes being cut might have seemed like typical Hollywood banter, they take on a different significance when combined with the controversial content of the film. This combination could potentially highlight a troubling pattern of marginalizing male characters, Legal experts might seize on this to paint a broader picture of Disney's company culture one that, rather than being solely about enchanting stories and dreams, also reflects deeper biases regarding who gets to be portrayed as a hero and who gets sidelined. This narrative could play a pivotal role in the courtroom, illustrating a potentially problematic trend within Disney's creative decisions. In response to these mounting pressures, Disney is actively making significant changes, the company is not merely adjusting its strategy but is implementing substantial overhauls. There's been a noticeable shakeup in leadership, with key executives being replaced. Additionally, Disney is revising its public messaging, shifting from a focus on complex social commentary to emphasizing pure entertainment. The goal is to return to the core of what Disney is known for creating captivating, magical experiences that resonate with all audiences, without the heavy-handed messages that have recently become part of the discourse. This strategic pivot aims to reconnect with fans by prioritizing engaging storytelling over controversial themes, hoping to restore Disney's image as a source of universal joy and wonder. It's a calculated move designed to win back viewers and repair the company's reputation by focusing on delivering the stellar entertainment that has long been Disney's hallmark. Telling great stories forget all the noise, the controversies, the legal dramas if Disney sticks to crafting tales that captivate without casting shadows on any group they can dodge these PR nightmares, and the courtroom dramas, it's about keeping it real with stories that resonate with everyone. Proving that you don't have to pick sides to deliver. Shifting focus, let's explore Disney's ambitious rebranding efforts, which are aimed at revitalizing their image. A key component of this strategy is the introduction of high-profile projects like Deadpool 3. This isn't just another superhero film, it represents a significant test of Disney's ability to handle diversity effectively. The way Deadpool 3 successfully integrates a diverse cast without creating controversy has people talking. The film has managed to attract a varied audience, reminiscent of the diversity found in a bustling New York subway, and yet it has done so without any major backlash or public discord. This smooth execution underscores Disney's potential to champion inclusivity while maintaining broad appeal.